The like figure, whereunto even baptism doth, doth also now save us, not by the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What I'm going to talk about tonight is baptism in the Bible, specifically that baptism does not save you. Okay? Uh, and we're talking about water baptism, right? Because we do get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Different subject. We're not going to talk about that. We're talking about water baptism. So, <clears throat> 1 Peter 3.21. What is baptism? We see it in the first few words. It says, the like figure. It is a figure. It is a picture of what? And we see it in the very end. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We see the death, the burial, the resurrection. That's what baptism is it's not sprinkling like the catholics do or the superman dunking of the baby like uh the the uh, uh greek orthodox do right we're talking about uh death burial resurrection it's a figure of what jesus did now i'm gonna uh go over to john chapter three you can stay where you're at for now what do we need to have a proper baptism? I've kind of touched on it already. But first you need a lot of water. John chapter 3. A lot of water. Not sprinkling. Okay, we need a lot. So, John chapter 3 verse 23 says, And John also was baptizing in Anon near to Salem because there was much water there. Okay, there was a lot of of water there. That's why he could baptize. All right, so I'm going to go over to Acts chapter 8. Now that we know that, hey, we need a lot of water, the next step is going into the water, right? We're not talking about, oh, there's a lot of water here, so we can obviously grab a, a cup full and, and sprinkle it on you. Acts 8 38 says, and he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water both philip and the eunuch and he baptized him so we see that they have to go down into the water we also see that baptism in both of these areas we're talking about at least a two person party here right a two person event not joseph smith you don't get to baptize yourself okay you're you're doing this in with somebody else where there's a lot of water and you're both in the water to as a figure of what jesus christ did so why are we baptized then okay if it doesn't save us why are we baptized matthew chapter 3 you can turn over there with me matthew chapter 3 verse 13 i'm going to read a few verses here then cometh jesus from galilee to jordan unto john to be baptized of him. So Jesus is coming to be baptized. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and alighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So we see a few things here. One, we know Jesus is perfect, okay? He's sinless. So baptism has nothing to do with salvation if baptism was for salvation. Nothing to do with it, okay? What baptism is is fulfilling all righteousness because we're commanded to be baptized if we want to be blessed of the lord just like uh when my children right i give them a commandment it regardless of what it is brushing their teeth or making their bed or whatever if they want to be blessed they're going to do it right same reason why we do baptism because we're commanded to do it it's fulfilling all righteousness okay it's a commandment the next thing we see, Jesus is baptized, okay? And at this point, before Jesus is baptized, is Jesus Christ the Son of God? Yes or no? Yes, okay? 
So he's not being baptized to wash away all his sins. He's not being baptized to become the Son of God. He's not being baptized to receive the Holy Spirit. Right? He's already got all those bases covered. All right? We see in verse 17, after he's baptized, a voice from heaven says, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Okay? One of the biggest reasons why we are baptized as a figure of salvation, right? As a figure of the death, burial, and resurrection, is to literally tell everyone around us, we are a son of God, right? The son of God thing happened before baptism. Baptism does not have anything to do with you becoming a child of God. That was when you had faith in what Jesus Christ did. You became a child of God. That baptism after that is just a picture, a announcement, if you will, that I am a child of God. It has nothing to do with that transformation. So, <clears throat> let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And I'm just going to prove that salvation is separate from baptism. These are places I like to go when I'm out at the door to just really drive home the point that w with people who are stuck on, I have to be baptized to be saved. You read these verses, there's no way if baptism was required for salvation that these verses could be true. 1 Corinthians 1, starting in verse 14, Paul says, I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius. Okay, if baptism is for salvation, this is starting off a little weird, right? Paul's like, I'm glad I didn't get any of you saved, if that's what baptism is, okay? He says, I'm glad I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Stark difference here. I was not sent to baptize. I was sent to preach the gospel. Okay? So if baptism was part of the gospel, if you will, of salvation, then Paul's got a contradiction here. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you, prove to you, that Paul indeed did get these people saved that he did not baptize. He's writing to the entire church. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, just a few pages over. 1 Corinthians 4.15 says, For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. If, salvation, if baptism was required for salvation, Paul could not say this to these people here at Corinth. He could not tell them, I've begotten you through the gospel if he was also required to baptism, baptize them for them to be saved. Total contradiction of terms if baptism is necessary for salvation. He says, I'm glad I baptized none of you. You're all my children in Christ, is what he's saying, right? I'm, I'm your spiritual father in Christ. I got you saved. That's what he's claiming. So, let's go over to Acts chapter 10. My last example here. A little backstory, Peter is preaching to Cornelius and his household after Peter was uh, summoned by some of Cornelius' servants and God gave him a vision right before his servants came that he was to go and preach to these Gentiles. So he's in the middle of preaching. We're in verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, talking about uh, the remission of sins, talking about the resurrection, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, but that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Okay, so these people are listening to Peter preach the gospel, 
and they believe on the gospel, and for the sake of these circumcised, right, God performs this miracle where they are speaking in a language, obviously, that they understand, and it's a miracle. They've received the gift of the Holy Ghost, which does not happen before salvation. You receive the Holy Ghost when you are saved. Okay? So, let's finish reading. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Right? And we saw also that the circumcision were them that believed. Right? We're talking about saved Jews. Okay? These Gentiles believe, receive the Holy Ghost. And then Peter's like, Hey, they've believed. We can see that they believe. They have faith in Jesus Christ. We should baptize them now. Yeah. Why? Why? Why did they already get saved and have the Holy Ghost if baptism is necessary for salvation? Right? right? If, if we're talking about some of these denominations which claim, hey, you've got to have faith and then get baptized and then have works and then maybe you're saved, this is, this is totally out of order for them. Yeah. Right? Because baptism does not is not necessary for salvation. There are going to be people in heaven that believed and were never baptized. Right. The thief on the cross. Okay? And then there's going to be people in hell that were baptized and never believed. Yeah. Right. right? And then, of course, there'll be people who believed and were baptized for the right reasons. Right? Not for salvation who will also be in heaven. So we can see here clearly from the Scripture that you know, just briefly, there's other verses that we could go to and we could dissect and we could read. But this is what I show people at the door. If they're like, you have to be baptized for salvation. There's some clear examples that Paul says, I baptize none of you and I'm glad. You're my children in the faith. And then Acts chapter 10, where these people get saved, clearly get saved before they ever get baptized. Right? So... With that, um, just a little bit of ammunition maybe for, for at the door, if you've never thought of it. Um, and that's, that's all my thought tonight. Lord, thank you so much for your word, and thank you for the clear examples uh, in the Bible to where we can uh, debunk false faith, Lord, and false works. Uh, thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.